the gaming industry has been a copy and paste the past few years. And when a studio comes along to try something new, usually it's half-baked and just good enough for launch, although being incomplete in the end. Till now, this is Arc Raiders. Let's start with the company, Embark Studios, who launched in late 2018, founded by a handful of developers who left EA and DICE to try a different approach, to build a studio centered around tooling, simulation, and research as first-class parts of game development. And that matters so much because Arc Raiders isn't ordinary. It's a game that aims to push tech as part of the creative process. A few other things to know. Embark attracted major investment and partnership early on. Nexon got involved shortly after Embark formed, eventually increasing its stake in the studio over time. That bankrolling relationship gave Embark a runway to experiment on tech-heavy systems, instead of betting everything on a single safe release. The studio also built and shipped the finals, which gave them experience with the dynamism system and some real lessons that flowed into Arc Raiders. So, why bring this up? Because a studio structure and money model shapes their decisions. Whether you go free to play, premium, or how much time you spend on research systems like machine learning driven animation, Embark's background explains why they took risks here. Arc Raiders was publicly revealed in 2021, and most people remember a cinematic reveal at the Game Awards that pitched it as a co-op third-person shooter where you and your friends fight big robotic threats called Arc. That original pitch leaned on cinematic set pieces and emergent combat against machines, rather than a looter extraction loop. Between 2021 and 2023, the team experimented a lot. Some development cycles focused on co-op systems, some on tooling and machine learning research, and in parallel, the studio released the finals. Over time, they reassessed. The market for extraction shooters heated up. Player expectations shifted and Embark decided to try PvPvE extraction approach, essentially combining their world of machine tech with risk and reward extraction loops. That transition wasn't just marketing, it changed core systems like loot persistence, how matches flow, and how encounters are designed with Arc. Now we're going to take a look at the design and reasoning and how this whole pivot changed the game itself. Starting with pacing and loop, extraction games are about risk and reward and tension across a run. That requires a different map timer, spawn logic, and loot pacing rather than just pure PvE. And play interaction is a big part too. PvPvE forces social tension. How visible are players, how much loot can they carry, and how do you encourage extractions over just camping and pure kills? Progression and monetization. Free to play economics, reward, retention. Differently than premium buys. Embark explicitly moved away from free to play because they wanted a curated launch and less monetization pressuring the core design choices. Now, I think this reflects off of Escape from Tarkov, Arena Breakout, and all those other games. They've all had monetization in-game that you can buy with real money to get ahead of other players, and it's obvious that Embark wants to stray away from that. Now we're going to dive deeper into machine learning and why it really does matter for us as players and for the gameplay loop in the long run. Now, machine learning isn't easy, and this is the technical heart of why people even care. Embark has been public about their machine learning animation experiments for years. They trained physics-based agents in simulation to learn locomotion, recovery, and other movement behaviors that would be expensive or unrealistic to hand animate at scale. The studio wrote about this publicly. There are dev posts and demos showing agents learning how to walk and recover in varied terrain. What this means in practice is instead of a handful of canned walk cycles and a bunch of transitions, you get controllers trained to solve balance, step placement, and recovery. And those controllers produce slightly different gates or stumble patterns depending on the body weight or damage the model had during training. So two arc bisons can look completely different in how they move and how they get up after a hit. That variety is baked into the movement layer and not just animation clips. A short non-technical explainer of the technique is Embark trains agents inside of a physics simulator. Think of it as an environment where gravity, collisions, and friction are simulated. The agent's policy, usually a neural network, receives an observation of terrain slope, joint angles, and current velocity, and produces actions, joint torques, and target angles. The agent is rewarded for forward motion, staying upright, or completing the task that it is given, and over many iterations it converges on controllers that can walk or react. That's reinforcement learning kind of in a nutshell. And an important clarification, this is not AI or general intelligence. The machine learning here is narrow and task specific. Locomotion, stunt recovery, or specific behaviors, designers still set goals, limits, and higher level behavior trees. The machine learning augments animation and expands variety, but it does not replace designers. Embark's own posts emphasize that designers still steer the output. 
Why does this even matter for players, though? Emergent movement patterns can make AI feel less predictable and more consequential. If a bison stumbles uniquely, players have to react differently. That adds a layer of readability and surprise that can animation cannot produce. Now, with this machine learning, Embark has solved a completely classic problem. To make enemies feel emergent, but keep combat fair. That means designers layered machine learning locomotion under readable telegraphs and audio cues, so players can anticipate big attacks. In earlier tests, players sometimes complained the machines felt too lethal, or unpredictable. The team iterated to make major behaviors feel more telegraphed. Visual postures, audio cues, and clear attack windows while keeping the small variations that make fights feel alive. Previews and impressions from press and players highlighted this exact balancing act. Exciting, but sometimes unforgiving until tuned. Now we're going to talk about the tech tests. So fast forward to October of 2024, the 24th to the 27th of October to be specific. Embark ran a closed tech test under an NDA. Now we did see some leaked content from it, but it wasn't supposed to be shown. And this was invite-based, uh, I applied for it, but I did not get in. And the Embark team asked the testers to keep some details pretty quiet so they could iterate without any marketing noise. And the point was incredibly clear, to get live data on servers, initial balance, and how players handle the PvPVE loop. And what showed up in the community feedback was, well, one, praise for the aggression and presence of the ARC machines and the overall tone of the world and story. The problems around onboarding with new players who were often unsure about what to do or what to even prioritize when it came to tasks and balancing issues. PvP became dominative because of extraction incentives. I mean, there wasn't enough and it wasn't tuned enough. And some players simply just hunted other squads instead of engaging with ARC or the objectives in the world. And to be expected, bugs and polish. But network desync and some aim feel complaints popped up. This test gave Embark concrete telemetry and data to act on. And speaking of acting on, now that's the next segment, which is iteration and priorities between the tests. Between the tests, Embark focused on a clearer onboarding process and reworking reward math to favor extractions, objectives, and smoothing netcode and performance and tuning enemy telegraph so fights felt fairer. And those are the exact kinds of changes that shift a game from interesting demo to a fun, repeatable loop, and the devs explicitly said that they use test feedback to expand progression slash crafting and to add more enemy variety for the second test. Now I also want to expand on why it's so important that Embark had these tests and not just a beta or something or an early release. The issue is with machine learning and how Embark runs things with their tech-based um, game development, it's, it's hard to get data just from the studio. Our creators is so cool because as we're going to be playing the game, the machine learning is going to get better. So when I shot a Rocketeer in the tech test 2, it actually helped the machine learning and how it stumbles, how it runs, and how it keeps on flying and all these things. Um, obviously, I don't know how that'll work in the future with it being too good at balancing itself, but I think the physics, or maybe they put a cap on it, um, which they definitely will. But I just think it's cool that us as players can act on this machine learning and that we affect it throughout the game's lifespan. Now we're going to move on to Tech Test 2. Tech Test 2 ran from April 30th of this year to May 4th, just a couple months ago. And Tech Test 2 was larger and included consoles for the very first time. And it was intended to stress cross-platform play and larger player counts. Embark added more archetypes, more weapons, and deeper progression in this build. They also allowed streaming and sharing during the Tech Test which wasn't allowed in the first one, as I mentioned earlier. Now, the community and press response to Tech Test 2 was absolutely amazing. And as someone who actually got to play, it's just a fantastic game overall, and that's exactly why I'm covering it. But ignoring that, uh, the world and the sound design and the machine AI, the highlights, and all the players noticed much better onboarding and smoother servers. But, I mean, obviously there were still criticisms because it's a tech test. But overall, absolutely amazing and just a well response to the community. Now... Obviously, the issues and flaws are match pacing, and some weapons were incredibly overpowered or just completely underwhelming, and the ongoing challenge of making extraction incentives appealing to others, and just the community as a whole, is relatively hard. However, I think there's hope, and 
Embark listens. That's something that's really great about them is that they actually listen to the things that we want them to change. And so I think there's a bright future for Arc Raiders and for the community as a whole. Embark has set Arc Raiders to release in 30 days from this video being published, which is on October 30th of 2025. Now they have a server slam beforehand, so if you don't want to buy the game now or pre-order it now, then wait till then. Try the game out, see if it's for you, and then you can purchase it. And I think it's so cool that Embark is putting all their eggs in one basket and saying, try our game. If you don't like it, don't buy it, and it comes out in the next week. But I think they know that you'll love it and that you will pre-order it or buy it on launch. Now, just for a reminder for all of you watching this video, Arc Raider starts at $40, and their Deluxe Edition is $60. This is not AAA pricing like Battlefield where it starts at $70 and then goes up to $100, which is insane if you ask me. But uh, I would wait till the server slam to see if you like the game and if you enjoy it, purchase it then. Don't waste your money and play what you love. So what is Arc Raiders? Well, it's a tech-heavy extraction shooter from a studio built to push tools and simulation. It started as a co-op title, pivoted to PvPvE, and leaned hard into machine learning driven enemy movement and use two public tech tests to shape, balance, and onboarding. The big question isn't whether the animation looks cool, which it does, but whether the tech can be married to solid loot design, good onboarding, and stable online systems at launch. And we'll find out on October 30th, 2025. For now, the tests show real promise and a studio that's learning in public. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it if you made it all the way through the video as it really helps me out um, continue this journey. I want to create quality content for the gaming industry as there's been so much AI slop out there that I want to create something new and something that's incredibly attractive to people that just want information quickly and want high quality videos, which is what I want and I'm making it for the masses and for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing and I hope to see you guys all in the next one and especially on the Rust Belt. See you guys soon. Peace.